the CBTA Board of Directors meeting. It's uh, March 27th, <coughs> just about 12 now. Um, first, we'll look at the uh, approving the minutes of the last meeting of February 28th. Hope you had a chance to review them. Uh, I'll take a motion. Dave, second. Peter, any objections, changes? All those in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. I will right, we'll move on to committee reports. I'll kick it off at the Board Operations Committee meeting that uh, convened on March 13th. Uh, we've reviewed the agendas for the committee meetings uh, in the month of March, as well as today's uh, board meeting. Uh, talked about the state of CDTA on uh, March uh, 5th, which was a great uh, mm -hmm. opportunity to share our story with the public, elected officials, other stakeholders. Uh, especially during the peak of the advocacy season. It was really a terrific event again this year. Thank you, everyone, Carl, and Jamie, the rest of the staff. It was a fun experience. Uh, got a lot of attention from the media in the days uh, following. Very positive. Uh, always a great event to spread the word about CDTA's hard work and the work of all of its employees. Again, kudos to everyone. Uh, also at our uh, Board Operations Committee meeting, we talked about the um, uh, board officers nomination process. Uh, April is the time when we uh, go, go through it. Um, I'm looking to kind of uh, slim down the process a little bit. So I will be uh, reaching out directly to everyone uh, about where you want to serve on uh, committees and such and officer positions so that we can come up with a slate for April's uh, meeting. So um, unless you're with the Bylaws, please. Uh, I'll be preaching that to you. <laughs> uh, the next meeting of the committee is Wednesday, April 10th, 9.15 a.m. here at 110 Washington Avenue. Uh, we'll move on to Performance Monitoring Audit Committee. Peter Wall. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, the committee met at noon on March 20th, and uh, we have a couple of consent agenda items, uh, starting with the procurement manual. Staff provided the committee with a report on the annual review of the procurement manual. Some minor changes are recommended based on new Federal Transit Administration guidelines, and we need a, a motion to approve revisions to the procurement manual. Thank you, Janine. Second. Second. Mike. Thank you. Excellent. Wow. This is going to right along. Yeah. Uh, and, contract uh, for fair. Yes. Um, are there any questions about the procurement manual before we take the vote? No. All those in favor of uh, adopting the procurement manual say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. The contract for fair collection equipment. As part of our expansion to Warren County, we need uh, new revenue collection equipment for funds, balls, vehicles, and facilities. Staff recommends a sole source purchase of 16 fare boxes, mobile vault, and bin, including services to install and configure software. And we need a motion to award a contract to SPX Gen Fair of Elk Grove Village, Illinois, for purchase of new revenue collection equipment for an amount not to exceed four hundred seventy-five thousand six hundred and seventeen dollars. Okay, can we get a motion on that? So, Jackie, thank you. Second by Dave. Any questions about the fare boxes? This is for up in Warren County, right? Yeah, this was as as planned. You know, nothing surprising here. Um, You'll, you'll probably see several of these types of, of, of procurements in the next you know, several months as we just formally convert everything you know, right now. Um, the revenue collection process is secure. Don't worry about that. But the, the, the information that comes with our revenue collection system is not there. So it's really going to um, bring us into the 19th century. And then, as you mentioned, I think, in the meeting, of the 19th century is good. Um, <laughs> that this is going to be also new for the folks in uh, Glens Falls. It's not just an upgrade of their existing. Yeah. So it's new for us, obviously. Well, not new, for us, new for us to get them there. New for their employees and new for their customers. So there's there'll be some work to be done. But it'll also, as I think John sort of sure. pointed out, will allow us to start to think about our fair collect, uh, our fair products. Awesome. They're, they're still operating on tokens. <clears throat> Anything else on that? All those in favor of the purchase say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's approved. Okay, the investment committee. The investment committee met on March 26th. 
and we'll provide the quarterly report shortly. It, I think it, my understanding is it should be uh, delivered soon. So, uh, and then administrative uh, discussion items, TRC maintenance audit. Dave Williams provided the annual fleet inspection report. The inspection was performed by the Transit Resource Center. They sent a team to our garages to accept, to inspect a sample size of buses. Uh, TRC categorizes defects um, that they identify as A defects, which are the more serious ones, and B defects. Uh, their inspections are like uh, our preventative maintenance inspections, very similar. Serious defects, A, uh, A defects remain the same as prior years, but there was an uptick in, in B defects. Uh, maintenance will focus on quality assurance inspections, <coughs> internal audit reviews, and specific training for employees to help reduce defects and improve our inspection program going forward. The fleet inspection report is included in your packets. Um, monthly management report. Mike Collins gave a monthly management report for January. MRT mortgage recording tax exceeded the monthly budget by 2% for the first time all year. Customer revenue is 11% over budget for the year, and rail station revenue is 15% over budget for the year. Wages were 1% under, under budget for February and 5% under budget for the year. Workers' comp is 20% under budget for the year. Materials and supplies were 54% over budget this month due to unexpected installation of a new uh, heating system. A year to date, we are 6% over budget, but overall, we're in very good financial position. And the non-financial performance report, Chris Desney gave the non-financial report for December. Fixed route ridership is up 29%. Uh, this month, star ridership uh, is up 12% for the month. One time, oh, sorry, on-time performance is 75%. Star on-time performance is 77%. We missed 0.36% of all scheduled trips. Preventable accidents were at 28, and non-preventable accidents were at 30. <laughs> the next meeting of the committee is scheduled for noon, April 17th uh, at 110 Lee. Thank you, Peter. Anybody have any questions? Which month was Chris Sesney's report on? Well, okay, you called it out. It said uh, um, report for December. So, <coughs> was that not correct? It was February. February. A little typo there, I guess. Okay, so yes, that was ended then. I'm the chair of the meeting. <laughs> wow. I, um, yeah, so, so Pete, the way this works, respectfully, the way this works, there's a chief staff liaison to every committee. This is the boss. It's not supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Eady had a, remember that? Doug Eady would take you out back. And, <laughs> I just want to apologize to all. Your jacket more than makes up. I'm looking to embarrass it, but I just want to make sure I heard it. I, I was sort of doing all this. We'll make we'll make that amendment as, as necessary. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, we'll move on to Community Stakeholder Relations Committee. David Sacro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the uh, Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on March 21st, 2024. Uh, I'm reading precisely. <laughs> in person and via Microsoft Teams. <coughs> staff, pro staff provided reports on CDPHP cycle, monthly earned media, and community engagement, and gave an update on the employee app link. John Scherzer provided an update on season eight of CDPHP cycle. The season will kick off in the next week or so, barring any more tricks from Mother Nature. It will feature 400 e-bikes and 200 pedal bikes at nearly 100 stations across the capital region. During 2024, we will expand into Bethlehem and the city of Rensselaer, not Rensselaer, but Rensselaer, add 200 new e-bikes along with 10 new stations. Emily DeVito provided an update on our employee app Blink, which was introduced to the workforce in 2022 to help communicate with employees. Uh, just a note that the majority of our workforce do not have company email addresses, so Blink is a way for us to communicate with them and them with us. 
Currently, nearly 80% of the workforce is engaged with the app. Blink provides company news as well as a hub section where employees can access forms and human resources information. We continue to promote the app and build content with a goal of reaching 85% participation by the two-year anniversary in June. Jamie Caslow provided the Earned Media and Community Relations Report. Over the last month, we earned 10 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio with an estimated value of $10,000. Stories focused on our annual state of CDTA and workforce development. We participated in local events, including the Capital Region Chamber's annual dinner, where we received the 2024 Changemaker Award. And that was a great event and one of the nicest I've attended. So I think very special for CDTA and kudos to everyone who has uh, made an impact on us in the community. You know that's important to me. So uh, uh, I think it's, it's awesome. Uh, we hosted students from, that wasn't in the report, sorry. I, 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 <laughs> Make your report as you'd like. We, we hosted students from Questar BOCES at our Troy facility, and we celebrated our workforce on Transit Employee Appreciation Day on March 18th. Jamie outlined social media engagement for the month. We saw an increase in followers across our social media channels. Top posts included a congratulations to Creighton Manning Engineering, for winning an engineering award for their work on our purple line. Looking ahead, we will provide transportation for the annual Dr. King Career Fair, host our annual Employee Safety Award celebration on April 27th, and participate in the CDPHP Workforce Challenge in May. The next meeting of the committee will be on Thursday, April 18th at 11.15 a.m. via Microsoft Teams and here at 110 Waterville Ave. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Dave. Any comments, questions? I just want to uh, just roll back to the CDPHP cycle program. Uh, for those of us on this side of the table, we weren't on the board when when the program started. Uh, you and Denise and Carm were all involved with that, uh, Georgie. And uh, I just find it kind of an amazing program. Every time we get a presentation about it, just the growth of the program, the changes in the program, uh, the popularity of the, the program. I know it's just a little piece of what we all do around here, but um, it just always strikes me. It's always a great Great news story every every time we hear about it, and uh, you know that's a good part of being on the board. So a little history for you. Um, the side of the table remembers. Um, we had no idea what we were getting into. We had zero experience, um, but we were driven by the fact that if we didn't do it, there were going to be four municipally operated bike share books. Schenectady, some in Troy, some in Albany, some in Saratoga Springs. And I remember talking about that, and we, among ourselves, said, that's not a good idea. So we said, we'll do it. Um, and honestly, that was it. And you know, I thanked the board at the time because they had, they had faith in us, but we really had no idea. And you know, John Scherzer, and especially Lindsey Bratton, who's not here, you see Lindsey from time to time. Lindsey manages it. Um, it takes, I mean, it's her baby, literally, she treats it that way. But it's getting to be a pretty big baby. Um, it's you know, 600 bikes, and frankly, yeah, the logistics of the, the program is just crazy. Are just crazy. Um, and she manages it with a contract. We have a contract that works for us. But it's um, in the place we were at where we, yeah, we'll do it. This doesn't sound like a good idea. And we were, and this is where the board was great because we talk about this taking chances, calculated risk. I'm not sure about this one. We had no money. Uh, we thought we could hit on a grant, but it was sort of like, we think we can hit on a grant. Um, we hit on a grant, and once we got the grant, and then once we brought in CDPHP, yeah. you know, their sponsorship is a third of the revenue, you know, more than a third of the revenue. Every year, you know, we get a check. And they, at least the last time we checked, they feel the same way about the program. So, you know, it's kind of a lesson in how we sometimes take a risk. <laughs> it works. And it works. Yeah. So all's well that ends well. Appreciate the work. <laughs> uh, next uh, 
Committee report comes from uh, Mike Crescione, Strategic and Operational Plan. Thank you, Jamie, and thank you again for chairing that in my sure. absence. Um, the committee met last Thursday, and uh, we have one consent agenda item and one administrative discussion item. And rather than read my notes, I am going to hand it off to Mike Collins, who's going to present the fiscal 2025 budget to the board. <clears throat> okay, well, thank, thank you, Mike. I hope no, this is not too distracting for you, Peter. It's, it's <laughs> tough. It's tough. I'll, I'll look away. <laughs> I also want to introduce, uh, this is a brand new slide deck um, that Jonathan put oh. together. So um, just, this is the initial. How about our oh. friend? Oh. Finance. <laughs> We're always talking about giving Mike some initial pop and flash of color. <laughs> <laughs> why, do I think, why do I think there's more money for business development <laughs> somewhere? It's in my notes, actually. <laughs> Uh, just next, next slide there. Um, no. So over the past several months, we developed a, a balanced operating and capital plan for fiscal 25. Um, we've received a significant proposed uh, increase in our uh, state operating assistance to help offset rising costs, i.e. inflation, the new labor contract, and the addition of uh, Warren County. Uh, the proposed operating plan is $135.7 million. That's based on revenue and expense assumptions. Um, we also have our five-year capital plan. That's kind of a look forward at uh, different uh, projects and innovations for our system and facilities. And the um, first year of the capital plan is actually funded at 46.9. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm just gonna give you some highlights here, a, a shortened version of Thursday's uh, presentation. Uh, as I said, the uh, operating budget is 135.7 million. Mortgage recording tax, uh, we're increasing that 1 million this year to 12.6 million, and that's because of the addition of Warren County. Um, and I think any tick down in interest rates this year will make a, a difference. You know, the Federal Reserve is looking at uh, cutting three different times this year. I think once in June, another time in <coughs> September, and then in December, we're looking at a quarter percentage point decrease. And if that helps the uh, mortgage mortgages, that will help us. So uh, we're it's a little aggressive for us, but I think we'll be able to, to do it. Um, customer revenue, we're increasing that 1.2 million. Uh, customer fares has been booming over the last uh, couple of years. I think back in end of last year, end of summer last year, beginning of fall, we actually uh, surpassed our pre-COVID numbers in fares. Um, I think uh, last year we increased our customer fares 30%, and this year we're being a little bit more conservative. We're looking at a 6.3% increase in customer fares this year. I think we're a little concerned that we might be peaking a little bit with customer fares, and at some point we you know, might flatten out. But uh, university uh, or universal access agreements are doing fantastic. We have about 45 of them right now. And if they continue to keep doing well, then we should be at our projections for next year. Uh, state operating assistance uh, is anticipated to be 4.8 million this year. It's an 8.1% increase. Uh, the state operating assistance is kind of broken into two different parts this year. For most of the state, the governor's executive budget has a 5.4% increase for state transit properties. Um, and for us, we have an additional 1.6 million for a carve out for Warren County. So all, all told, that's uh, $4.8 million. Uh, right now, our state operating assistance is about 50% of our revenue, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, last Thursday, I had a chart up here just to show a picture of what our state operating assistance has done for the last few years. So this year, we're looking at an 8.1% increase. Last year was 14.5% increase, and the year before in fiscal 23, it was 25.4% of an increase. That also included a carve out for Montgomery County. Um, CARM and, and Lisa and NIPTA, they're still um, advocating the state for a 15% increase in state operating assistance. And there's uh, some one house bills out there. The Senate's looking at, or they proposed a 15% increase to transit. The Assembly has proposed a 10% increase to transit plus a carve out for Warren County. So I guess in the next week or two, we're going to find out what happens when the state adopts our budget. If we do better than we think, uh, you know, I'll be back and we can do a budget adjustment, you know, sometime over the next few months. 
On the expense side of the house, wages and benefits make up about 70% of our budget. Those are the men and women that work here at CDTA and directly drive and serve our customer base. Um, our recent collective bargaining agreement uh, was a very good one for our employees and for our future employees. Uh, and we, uh, we expect that to make a difference, the, the higher wage rates with our recruiting and our retention. It's already making a, a difference in our recruitment. And I would expect that we'll do the same with our retention over the next few months. And the 4% increase wage increase um, for this year includes uh, the collective bargaining agreement, includes a full year of service on the purple line, and it also includes the addition of police falls. Uh, professional and maintenance services, up 1.4 million this year. Um, several different things make that up. Uh, IT security being one, uh, telecommunications being another. Uh, advertising actually for Glens Falls. We have uh, expenses for our new electric car share program drive. Um, IT hardware and software upgrades and replacements. And, and finally, uh, uh, some money for Glens Falls um, facility up there. And then parts and materials. So this, these lines in particular were significantly affected by inflation and the supply chain uh, challenges that have been going on for the last couple of years. Um, we've also expanded our, our fleet uh, due to, to service expansions like Montgomery County, the Purple Line, and now Warren County. So we're looking to increase that line, or those lines, by eight hundred thousand dollars. All right, next slide, please. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kind of briefly, five-year capital plan. It's just shy of three hundred million dollars. Uh, this year, we're looking to do some red line BRT upgrades. That's upgrading uh, stations, uh, pedestrian crossings, sidewalks signals between Niskayuna and uh, Schenectady. Uh, we're looking to do and start three mobility hubs, um, one on Manning Boulevard, another on Washington and Allen, and a third on uh, Beter and Knott Street in Schenectady. Uh, fleet replacements, we do this every year. This year, our budget is about $16.5 million for a variety of 30 plus vehicles, includes 40 foot Gillig's, some star vehicles, some flex vehicles, and we're buying a wrecker. Um, 15 years ago, we bought our first wrecker, and for those of you that don't know what a wrecker is, it's basically a giant tow truck for buses. And it was kind of a big deal in our maintenance department 15 years ago. Um, but um, it's 15 years old, it has, I don't know, 350,000 miles on it, and it's time to get a new one. Um, West facility, um, we've done, started site selection and concept development for a new facility in the western part of our service network. We also just applied for a federal grant, a $6 million federal grant for planning and uh, design work on a new facility. We should know something around the end of June, beginning of July for successful with that grant. So um, that kind of concludes the shorter version of the Thursday presentation. Uh, if you don't have any questions, I'll turn it back over to Mike. Hey, yeah. Just a, uh, some info. Well, yeah, I guess I'll do it. West facility, I, you know, some of you are probably saying, well, what's that? Because we might not be at that committee. Um, you know, where are we with that? Um, we are looking at a couple of different locations. Um, quite honestly, um, we... Um, are intrigued by a location that happens to be literally right next door to 2401 Max and Low. It's the um, Gazette uh, property, Gazette building and adjacent property. Uh, it might provide us with um, everything we need and then some. Um, so we're, we're doing a little bit of work on that quickly uh, to see if, if, if it passes all our, our tests. But um, sometimes you have to be reminded of what's right in front of you. Um, so we're not we're not uh, sworn to that location, um, but it um, I think it it, it it deserves due diligence quickly. So we're, we're doing that, <coughs> and, uh, and that, that that may happen quickly if it happens. Would you agree, Mr. Chairman? And I'd like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
It should be noted it accounts for a third of our capital budget. So yeah. Oh, yeah. it's a big investment <coughs> to say the least. But you know, we've talked about this for a long, long time and the, the shed, which is really what it's connected to the garage is, you know, the shed. Um, I, I worry about it. I worry about a, a, a wind from the west. You know, say that tongue in cheek, but we do worry about that. We've got to, we've got to do something. And the beauty of the the Gazette property is it's, you can reach out from one building to the next and touch it. That's how close it is. So, talk about that. Good. So, so we uh, need to move ahead with our yes, motion to yes, so adopt the uh, 2025. Budget and the capital budget? Yes. So the committee recommends approving the fiscal year 2025 operating plan totaling $135,695,631 and a five year capital plan totaling $299,542,516. Is there a motion on that? Jackie, second by Denise. Any questions about either one of the budgets? Good presentation last week, very detailed. Uh, good presentation today, Mike. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The resolution is approved. All right. And then our administrative discussion, which Carm briefly touched upon, was the uh, West facility update. Uh, CARM provided to the committee an update on where we are with the development of that facility. <coughs> Staff visited the Daily Gazette building located at 2345 Jackson <coughs> Road Extension next to our Schenectady Division, which is being listed for sale. Built in 1988, this 107,000 square foot structure is situated on 9.7 acres in zoned M1 which is light manufacturing and warehousing. There are ample maintenance and administrative space currently uh, occupied by several lessees. There is also adequate infrastructure for charging of buses. We will continue to explore this option by having our engineers assess the building and conduct an appraisal. The next meeting of the committee will be April 18th. Uh, 12 p.m. here at 110 Waterbury Dev and via Microsoft Teams, and that concludes my report. Great, thank you, Mike. Yep. Any follow-up questions on that? If not, then we will move on to the CEO report. Thanks, Jamie. I'm going to bounce around a little bit because um, good governance has occurred. All the uh, reports have come out of committee, and basically everything I wrote is uh, even mentioned. So that's a great thing. I think we're working the way um, community structures design. I sent you all a note. Um, we have a new board member, Jackie McDonough. Jackie will fill uh, Joe's Sparana, is filling Joe Sparana's seat. She and I have been in contact, just exchanging information. Um, she um, has a, a great resume. Um, she'll, she'll, uh, she'll fit right in with this group. Um, and we anticipate maybe the April meetings that, you know, she'll We'll figure out which committee to attend, and, or maybe the board meeting is, is her first start. So I'm sure you all welcome her. I'll, I'll send a note to you with her email address as an introduction. Maybe you can offline at least uh, introduce yourself to her. But um, that brings us uh, to full capacity. It looks like we're going to have to find another. Oh, that's right. Missing Dan. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, no to go. <clears throat> Dave, um, and you had reminded me of that the other day. Uh, they're, they're in the process. Albany County is in the process. There is a name. Um, it just needs to get to the, through the right channels to the governor's appointment office. And, um, hopefully that gets filled shortly. Uh, it would be nice if it got filled this legislative season, um, which has, you know, what, six weeks to go. Um, somebody that lives in Albany County. He does. He does. <laughs> yes, he does. Um, and, yeah, send it to the appointments office, not to the CEO's office. Um, so it's great to see the budget approved. Uh, at the planning committee meeting last week, I, I happened to produce an annual report uh, from circa 1981 when I started here, and the budget was $15 million. So it, it, it at least for me, shows you the change. Um, and then adjust, you, you had done a quick... $41 million in today's dollars. Today's dollars, uh, 
thank God for a chairman who knows uh, how to do that. <laughs> so 41 million, uh, if that means anything to all of you. Um, you know, the carve outs that we talk about in the state operating assistance program uh, are extremely beneficial to us. Uh, and that is, a, that is a Lisa Morello uh, production at, at best. Um, and it started in Montgomery County where I, she was just insistent and it was every meeting it has to be a carve out for Montgomery County, not just an add in. Uh, so we were successful there and as you recall, quite successful financially done the same thing. It's in the governor's executive budget. It's in the assembly one house. It is not in the Senate. Um, we think that was just an oversight uh, part of the Senate finance team. And Lisa has been reminding of them, uh, reminding them of that um, weekly, if not daily. So hopefully it, it survives um, because it, it really provides, you know, continuing way for us to, to finance um, the operation, but as Mike said, you know, state state operating assistance is now fifty percent of the budget. So, I remember a day also when we would chastise the state as not doing their part and you know, not being a good partner financially. Uh, we can't say that any longer. Uh, they are they are doing their part, and they are a a great financial uh, partner. As Dave talked about, um, you know, the the change maker award. I'm just reflecting on the last month. And, all the great things that you know we've been doing and the state of CDTA is wonderful. We are able to, to really showcase our organization. You know, Dr. Uh, Roger Ransami was dynamic at best, uh, dynamic to say the least. Um, but you know, we, we serve on, we, meaning me and many of the staff people here, serve on lots of different boards and organizations, not-for-profits, uh, constantly out there you know, telling the CDTA story. But to receive the Change Maker Award, you know, with 1,200 people there, and you, you know, sometimes we, I, I know we all joked about 1,200 people, but it's 1,200, you know, community leaders, business leaders, you know, people who you know really have no idea of who we are, what we do, to be honest with you, but they do now. Um, three times in the last two weeks, I've been out different places with Sheila, my wife, and people have um, shake, shaken my hand and said, "Hey, great job." And three times she said, who's that? Three times I said, I don't know. <laughs> um, I have no idea um, who, who they are. So just, you know, gives you an idea of, I think, the, the, the breadth and reach of, uh, of an award like that. Um, I'm not quite sure if that means we've made it, but if not, we're pretty close to making it, whatever that means. The, the song back in the 80s, you know, making it. Those of you that can remember, it was tied to a TV show. Oh, um, Mary Tyler Moore? No, no, no. It's been that one, would have been one of the spinoffs. Not the, uh, I'm still thinking the Jefferson's. I thought you would pick that no. up. But anyway, <laughs> I think we're, we're making it. Um, we just take you for a TV yeah. watcher. Yeah. No, <laughs> a music <laughs> bar, music yeah. bar. But, but at the end of the day, really, it's, 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 um, you have to, I always remind myself that everything we achieve, every single thing that we achieve is, because of the collective efforts of 750 people. Um, none of it happens if, if they don't come to work every day and do what they do every day. So a week or two ago, we had our exemplary attendance lunch. It's sort of like, you know, you can tell that somebody went to Catholic school and I mean, this was a big deal when we were in grammar school and high school, you got perfect attendance. Um, and it was drilled into me by you know, my mother and father. You, you had to show up every day. So we have 80 people who receive exemplary attendance, um, which is significant here. You know, they, they roll out of bed and, you know, like Saturday and Sunday. Who wants to come to work? You know, driving a bus when, as Gary Guy reminded me, they're going downhill sideways. <laughs> you know, Lance Duncombe is here plowing. Uh, I have gotten so many, and he doesn't know this, I've gotten so many uh, comments from people who appreciate that the guy who runs operations shows up Saturday night, jumps in a truck, and is plowing. Well, some of them have said, does he know how to plow? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I had a quick but, study on the truck in the uh, but, salter, so. But the fact that he was here um, 
you know, doing that is supporting you know, the people who come to work every day. But I remind myself that nothing, none of these change maker awards, none of these, you know, fancy glass, I think they're glass, you know, trophies show up without them doing what they do. So really that, you know, the award is everyone's. You know, everyone sitting it's, here in a room, everyone. It's hard know. too because you can't be late either. No, you so can't be late. You know, the 80 people show up. Lady, from event. experience, I've It's just it. like it's Our Lady of Mount Carmel nuns, you know, giving you that when you were in fourth grade. Yeah, there's no 15, you were there every single day. There's no 15-minute pass or any of that stuff. For, you didn't get a pass. It was late. 80 One, employees? 80. Yeah, it's pretty. This is 80 um, uh, bargaining units. You know, obviously, ma management people operate under a different. I mean, you can be a little late. It's, it's okay. You um, punch a clock. Here, you're literally punching a clock. So, 80 on 700, give or take, and 650. It's significant. And you see a lot of the same faces. Uh, Chris Rowe, who is one of our um, trainers, works for Jack, uh, 13 consecutive, I think it's 13, 13 consecutive years. And then you have drivers in the same. It's it's just amazing. Yeah, I, I'm just proud of what they do. For, not just those, everybody, because you know, none of this stuff happens. We can glitz up the the logo as much as we want. We can show up and you know, be members of CEG and you know sit around the economic development table. All all great, but if we're not producing every day, um, it, it doesn't matter. So everybody's award is to change me. That's it for me. <laughs> well said, Carmen. Thank you. <clears throat> um, any board member comments about any open items? Anything you want to get off your mind? <clears throat> question about uh, yeah. if, if they're still about the lease space at the uh, rail station. That we have. Always. <laughs> Sorry. I hate to be so yeah, always. We have, I don't know how much, Jeremy. Yeah, very little now because the call center is there, but there's still some available space, you know, maybe 600 square feet. Great spot for someone who travels to New York periodically. There could be more space becoming available in the next couple of years with our lease with Amtrak. Yeah, as we, uh, you know, one of the West facility things that we were looking at the Gazette building, you know, tons of opportunity there. We're still pretty tight for space. Uh, <clears throat> here at 85, and as Jeremy says, We've exhausted. We're not leasing it. We're, we're well. We're leasing it to ourselves. It's not a bad thing, but I'd like to change that. Saratoga as well. Right. Train station. Yeah. Still space oh, available right, there. Right. We're currently using it to uh, to prepare the CDPHB cycle um, as a workshop and to get the North Country bikes out there. But there is still available space out there as well. And with development along that roadway, mm -hmm. be opportunistic. You know, I wanted to mention something. There was a piece, I think it was yesterday's paper, where you donated an engine to the BOCES thing I saw yesterday. So that was very good. Doing a lot of work with BOCES. And, uh, you know, Dave, is, Dave Williams is leading this. A lot of work with BOCES. Um, we're, even, we're working with Albany High School, which has their own uh, automotive tech program. And uh, we have, as, as Roger Ransemi talked about, we have an emerging a partnership with Hudson Valley. We're, we're not going to leave any stone unturned of workforce development. We, we realize that we have to change and we have to connect, um, but there, there are opportunities there. That's great. Uh, the next item on our agenda is to convene an executive session to go over two uh, legal matters. So it's uh, 1240. I'd like to get a motion to convene. Uh, in executive session, Peter, a second. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? So we'll, we'll uh, uh, get everyone out of the room. We'll talk about these two matters. Come back. So we're back in uh, public session now following the uh, executive session. It's 1256. Uh, there was a discussion about two pieces of, legis uh, of litigation. Uh, no actions were taken. No actions will be taken now. Uh, any other topics before the board? Uh, seeing none, our next meeting is um, April 24th, Wednesday, April 24th, 12th noon, right here at 110 Waterville Avenue. And I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you, Jackie. Adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.